This has got to be the strangest watch San Martin has ever sent me. I reached out to them a while ago and asked if they had any new original or semi-original designs. And this is what they sent. Basically, it's a mini dress turtle. And just let that sink in for a second, as it's not something I think anyone ever asked for. Yet, here it is. It's weird, yet also interesting and weird. Spec-wise, you're looking at a 40mm case with a shorter 46mm lug-to-lug, -lug, giving it a similar lug-to-lug -lug, but a smaller case than the Seiko Mini Turtles. Total thickness is a reasonable 12.1, and that does include a flat sapphire with AR and a closed screw-down case back, as well as it's rated to 100 meters of water resistance with a signed screw-down crown. One thing that's particularly interesting here is the movement, as it's powered by a Seiko Epson YN55A, which is basically an unbranded Orient F6922 movement. The same movement you'd find in the Orient Rays, Makos, and the more popular Kamasus. So it's unusual, but still a proven workhorse. I've heard that the Seiko NH35s have been becoming harder and more expensive to source, so this just might be San Martin's way of finding an alternative. Now, rounding everything out, the case is 316L stainless, it has a 20mm lug width, and weighs in around 138 grams. Give or take a link or two on its Jubilee bracelet. And in case you missed it, this watch was provided by San Martin, and as far as I know, they're not going to ask for it back. Hence that promotional tag at the beginning. That said, let's start off and first start by talking about what I don't like, the bad here. And first up, we have to talk about the finish. This watch is polished everywhere, and I mean everywhere. Even the typical San Martin clasp has a mirror polish on it here, which of course means that over time this thing will show a multitude of smudges and scratches all over. But particularly, I want to talk about the design aspect of it here. And all this flash wouldn't necessarily be a problem if this was a straight up dress watch, but this one doesn't quite seem like it knows what it wants to be. The cushiony turtle case shape is one that will always be tied to a diver. Although in this case, it is a bit slimmed down. So as far as turtles go, it is a more subtle case. There's no beveled edges, no crown guards, just a small crown and sleek yet stubby lugs, which creates a design that puts more emphasis on the beautiful fluted bezel, inevitably capturing your attention and drawing your eyes to the dial. So it seems like the foundation here has been built on something that's more sporty and casual, with a lot of dress elements built on top of it, creating a bit of an identity crisis for it. Now, to me, a skinny turtle is still a turtle. And if this wants to be more of a sports watch, I think it needs some more brushed or casual touches done to the case. You can still keep that fluted bezel, but at least make the sides brushed. Or, if you really wanted to make this more of a dress watch, I think it could work, but maybe a slightly smaller case would be better. Moving on, the only other negative aspect I've found here is with the bracelet. Most of the time, San Martin does a fantastic job with their bracelets, and here that is mostly true. It's a Jubilee-style bracelet that tapers nicely from 20 to 16 to a milled clasp. You have solid end links and solid links secured with screws. It's beautiful, it's comfortable, and polished up to the nines like the case. Overall, it's good, which you probably should expect from San Martin, but I did run into one issue while trying to size it, where one of the screws just wouldn't come out. It just spun and spun, but I could never pull it out. So eventually I gave up, screwed it back down, and took a different link out. Which to be fair, sometimes happens, and there were plenty of other links to make this bracelet work. But the reason I'm making a bigger deal out of it here is that this is the second San Martin in a short period of time that I've had a problem with the bracelet. Recently I got their Ranger homage and I had another problem with its screws. So it could just be my bad luck here, but it could also be that the QC at San Martin is starting to slip. Either way, I think it's something you should be aware of, as that's the only way we really know if it's a real issue is if we talk about it. So if you've had similar problems with San Martin recently, let me know down below. And one quick note here, sometimes I don't have the bracelet on the watch when I'm doing the review to make a particular point. That's not really the case here. I just have more photography work to do on it, and that bracelet's kind of a pain to get off. So I'm not planning on putting it back on the watch till I'm done done. Anyway, that was the bad. Let's move on to what I did like here. 
and like all Sand Martins, it is extremely well made. In particular, they did a great job here with everything under the crystal. Where you have this matte, off-white dial paired with applied silver metallic indices and hands. And I think these macro shots should really tell you everything you need to know here. They created a clean yet symmetrical and striking dial. Everything is well executed and clearly defined. The only real question here is if the overall design really works for you. Loom is also pretty good here, with the blue BGW9 coming to life as soon as the lights go out. It doesn't quite keep up to that of Iseko Diver, but I think it's good enough for whatever this thing is trying to be. It's also very comfortable on the wrist, especially when it's paired with that Jubilee bracelet. The shorter lug-to-lug -lug and 12mm height keep the watch squarely in the center of your wrist, all while the solid weight of 138 grams gives you a sense of quality without ever taxing your wrist by being overly heavy. Value is also another positive, as this is a watch that gives you a lot of bang for your buck, which again is very typical when it comes to San Martin, it's kind of what they're known for these days, as well as almost all Ollie watches, and that's why some people are really addicted to them. I think these are regularly going for around 200 bucks, and that's quite a lot of watch for the money. And last, but certainly not least, is the fact that this is not an homage, or at least as far as I know it's not one. It may be a bit of an odd duck, and some may be inclined to call this a Franken watch, but we should still give credit where credit is due, and San Martin is trying here, as it's especially important to do that in a segment of the industry that usually prefers Photoshop to originality. As for what's just okay, the nitpicky section, I didn't really see much here. One thing I noticed is that the finish inside the lugs when the bracelet is off is a little bit rougher than the rest of the case but for a $200 watch, it's not really a huge deal. The only other things that come to mind might be just a general generic warning about the extra risk from ordering from AliExpress, as well as, once again, I'm not entirely sure who this watch is for. Maybe this is a sign I've been doing this for too long, but there's something about this watch that reminds me of the watches I used to get off AliExpress four years ago, back in the early days of AliExpress back before anyone knew about San Martin and Steel Dive wasn't even a thing. When there weren't quite as many homages, and it was all about those $60 Cadisons with a Seiko movement. As back then, Ollie watches weren't perfect, far from it, but they were cheap, and they were just fun to look at. But more importantly is that oftentimes they didn't quite make sense from a traditional standpoint. Back then it seemed like the brands were just constantly experimenting to see what works and as such, they often wound up with these round pegs that didn't quite fit into any particular square hole. In fact, that was sometimes the fun of getting these watches, as you never knew quite what to expect. It's just that it makes a watch like this kind of hard to recommend at times, as you're not really sure who'd be looking for it or who'd want it. That said though, I can tell you from first-hand experience, it's a really good looking watch, something I appreciated more and more as I was getting these images of it. So bottom line, if you're looking for something different and you like the way this one looks, I think you'd like the watch. It's a typical San Martin, and for the price, I think everyone would be happy with the quality. For me, it's not quite my cup of tea, but I do think there's potential here. It's just one that might need a few tweaks, either in size or maybe change in finishing. And that is the San Martin SN0069 in a nutshell, the San Martin Dress Turtle. As usual, let me know down below what you thought about it, as well as if you've had any issues with San Martin bracelets. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help the channel. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, I'll see you next time.